everyone, this is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Human Colony Hucolo webinar. Today we have Jim Charles channeling for us. And in the room, uh, just on our side, we have Temple, Stephanie. Oh, and I have some feedback, so let me stop that really quick. Uh, we have Stephanie, Temple, Sheer, um, Michelle, Marlene, Matt, excuse me, Mark, uh, Alex on the controls, Ava and Christine. And Jim, if you can say who you have on your room, that would be great. Yeah. Angela, Barbara, Lacey, and Garrett, Sean, and Ray. Okay, perfect. You have a you have a full house there today. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've had some requests for um, different entities to come through. Uh, we've had uh, you're going to have to help me, but I know we've had for a Yeti or a Sasquatch or or a Bigfoot. Um, and a Larian. Yeah, a Takur. And who else? A Blue. Konar, the Blue Zeta. Right. Um, we, the. Um, Nichung, yeah. How do you say that properly? Nichung. Nichung, okay. Nichung. Okay. All right. If he is a deity that uh, go to the monasteries and things, and would you say here? And Grindel was also mentioned. Okay. Grindel. Okay. Okay. And um, just before we get started, um, I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you would like to in the future be in the room, you can join Human Colony on Hucolo org and for ten dollars a month you have access to all of the uh, paid webinars you can be in the room and ask a question directly you also have as access to all of our classes um, that we're teaching so you'll be able to find out everything first <clears throat> and then on the first through the sixth of february this year 2008 we will be hosting our second ascension workshop and that'll be hosted by jim and max uh, they will be doing channeling teaching telepathy galactic reiki the special guest there will be jonathan c martin he'll be there training um, people to learn to channel the way he does and also doing some channeling so for i heard he wasn't coming now oh he's not coming I don't, something came up and he couldn't come. Oh, well, then so, erase that last bit that I said. That's no longer the case. But so, uh, but it's still that. a great thing to be. <laughs> it's a yeah, good thing so. to be there. <laughs> and excuse yeah. me. And if you, um, you the, the full payment uh, is $575. But if you do a down payment of 50% now, you or 287, then you can pay the second half when you get there. So go to hucolo.org for all the information. Okay. There are still many places left, so okay. um, it, it's cool. So. If you feel called, then you should definitely go because it's always good. Yeah, because it is for them. Yeah, whoever feels led to go, that's the ones that should really go. Yes. Okay, so we look forward to whomever you're going to channel, and uh, if anyone in the room on Jim's side, since they've got such a full room today, please speak up when it comes to asking a question, because okay. so we can hear. If you want to ask, a, and uh, so they can hear it in the audience, because the microphone is rated right here. So if you need to speak, you have to come up and talk, because they'll never hear you if you're back there. Right. Right. So the walk sort of up here and talk. Exactly. Into the microphones. Maybe that chair the where the, the someone's feet are, that could be like a hot seat. Someone could come sit in that chair and get a yes. little close to you. No, no yes. one okay. would hear you. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, we will see you when you get back. And uh, yeah, perfect. Perfect guy awesome. with the water. Who <laughs> <laughs> moved the chair up. <laughs> Oh, he's moving a chair over here. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Why? So uh, while we're getting ready, I'll just uh, get prepare for a minute here. Okay. We'll see you when you oh, get back. There's a chair here. Now. Yeah. Chairs are appearing everywhere. Okay. Chairs are everywhere. <laughs> okay. Chairs and cheers. Aww. All right. I will be back later. Have a wonderful session. And all right. All right. Here we go. I need a little sip of water before we go. 
Thank you. Thank you. Ah, someone else is coming. Hello, it's John Bailey, I think. Hi, John. John entered the room. Now we have John and Sean. Yes, okay. Many from the past and the future. Greetings. Thank you. And, and, and whom are we speaking with? You are speaking with the Chiasa. Greetings, Chiasa. Are you a collective or an individual? I'm an individual from the Atlantean period. Okay, welcome. Thank you. I noticed that there were some that requested this. And there is information from the Atlantean period that does good for these days that you live in. For we went through something very similar. But you must remember that you as a civilization, and not talking about individually as per se, but you as a civilization decide your own fate. Come down to individual decisions. You must create your own world, your own reality, so that it can be a positive realm. You see, many live in negativity in your realm, and it brings more negativity to you. If you discover that you are speaking in negative terms, such as our people did toward the end, because they were not happy, governments were running um, Atlantis at that particular time, there was much change going on. And of course, with change, there are those that are not willing to do so or find it difficult. You are going through many changes at this time. And so be positive toward them as much as possible. But remember, you may create how the change will outcome, be an outcome in your own life in many ways. Does that make sense to you? Yes. I just am here to answer some questions because I know that that is what you want to do. You want to ask and find out for yourself what it was like in these times and how it parallels the times that you live in at this moment. So continue. If there are some that want to ask or want me to tell about certain parts of Atlantean government or civilization, please let me know so that I may give you a detailed account as much as I can. 
I'll be taking questions in the chat for anyone who has a question, please put in your queue. I would want you to remember this. There are many that speak about Atlantean cultures, and it is true that there are many diverse and thought, uh, different thought processes, just as if you were to ask any person here, your culture, they would give you a different answer, each and every one. So we are individualized and we see our culture and our peoples in different ways than you may see, than others may see the culture in a different way than you do as well. So it is just my perspective that you are looking for. I have a question here in the room. Okay, thank you. Ready? Yes, I am ready. My name is Garrett, and I was wondering if Atlantis was a great place, and I understand that you weren't happy with the governments and it ended. So what exactly would you say like, brought the end, and what advice from that would you give for us to not end up in the same situation? Well, that is a multifaceted question because the actual end came in a, in a disaster where a tsunami had washed over Atlantean areas and destroyed much of it. But at that period, there was much unrest and many people were unhappy at that time. So they had decided to leave at that point. But it was talked about that they were going to leave before that. And the Lumerians actually did leave, as you are aware. The Lumerians took some of the crystals that were very powerful and moved away from the Atlantean culture because they felt that it was not moving in a direction that suited their culture or their people or their idealisms. So, yes, the, but the, the very thing that is the same with your culture to our culture is that there was much change going on and there was much unrest with the people and much thought about negativity and uh, not wanting to have certain people in government, not wanting to um, fuel certain ideas that they thought were negative, but yet the changes were there for a positive reason, but they could not see far enough into the future to understand how they could re get a positive re result from these changes. So open your mind, because there are many things that are happening now that will have future positive results, but may seem negative now. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that does. Thank you. Very good. Um, Leela has a question for you. Leela, greetings. Greetings. Uh, where exactly Atlantis is located because I read a lot and saw a lot there and there are, is a dis dispute? Of course there is. And the reason for the dispute is because Atlantis as a continent went into the Mediterranean Sea area. It, it had a great uh, section of, uh, and some of the islands that are in the Mediterranean were actually part of Atlantis, but as, as it um, was destroyed uh, and as the island actually did sink eventually, um, some islands are still there that represent um, Atlantis, but the peoples and the uh, technology that were there are no longer there because it was removed when they left. They could not leave evidences behind because this some of them were too far advanced and would have actually destroyed your civilization if they were found and used. Now, the other part of that puzzle or mystery is that some of these uh, devices technologically, you probably wouldn't have figured out right away, but in this day and age, they would have. So the what they had, had done is they swept the area for all metals and detected where they all were and the major crystals that they were looking for and took them along with them. And so there was maybe minuscule pieces of metal left 
in period, but nothing major or nothing that was intact as a piece of technology. The other thing that the other part of the question is, uh, or the answer is, um, Atlantis was in the Atlantic Ocean and stretched into the Mediterranean as well. And large and communicated with the European areas as well as the Egyptian and the uh, Northern African areas. And there was trade between all of these people. But when the Atlanteans lost everything in some senses, the tsunami was quite large. And there, after that, there was some volcanic and uh, energetic but earthquakes. And the Atlanteans also helped the island to sink. It just did not happen at all so naturally. They wanted it to be uh, taken away so that people would not be finding anything or remnants of their culture in the future. And the places that were left that were still islands, as, as it were, were scoured and they, they left them go. Uh, did I help uh, to sink the Atlantis too? There were many that helped it to sink Atlantis, but there were those that were against that, of course. As I said, there were many viewpoints in Atlantis, but the greater part of the, the government uh, won out. Mm -hmm. The higher form, right. the uh, higher ranking. Uh -huh. Can you tell me uh, my involvement in Atlantis? I thought you already knew that, but I can tell that you were a priestess or a priest. I'm not sure which one. You were of a religious nature in the in the latter part. The final destruction of the uh, continent was imminent. You were in a religious kind of a uh, job, if, if occupation. And I'm not sure if you were male or female at that time, but you did have uh, access to the crystals, and you did at least the ones that were left by the Lumerians, and you were always praying that the crystals would reveal the, the true future and why the future had to be the way it was. You did have some of the answers, but uh, some of it was still shrouded because, remember, the future is never true if there are decisions of a major, uh, a major ilk to be decided. Some of those decisions were not decided until the last moment. And so the future could not be determined properly until these final decisions were made. That makes sense. The crystals from Lemuria, are we going to get access to them or where are they? that some people have already found a couple ones are buried and they were they are in the ring of fire uh which is to say of uh, the pacific rim but they are uh not probably where you might think they are but the lumerians were very careful and very uh clever on how they would uh, bury them. And I don't even know myself because I am not Lumerian, but we heard many rumors for the fact that they were buried in the Pacific Rim. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, um, is there any other questions from anyone? Stephanie had a question. Can you ask yes. it? Hi, good morning. Thank you for coming. You are welcome. Can you hear me? I'll turn this up. Uh, I guess I'm curious about two things. One is that there were disciples of Thoth that um, make me wonder how, with that teaching, the community came to its end the way it did. The community um, two, that, 
the thought processes of their religion, if you will, their of spirituality, were taken with them when they left the planet. Of course, there are remnants of thought in many different places around the world that met the Atlanteans and understood their belief systems. However, it is not a religion at this time on your planet that would reflect exactly the way the Atlanteans worshipped. It is an interesting thing that they were a one god society, of course, uh, but they also were polytheistic in the sense that they believed God was in everything and that everything should be respected because God created it, not necessarily because he was in it at that moment, but they believed that he created everything, put himself into anything that existed. And so they were uh, lived in an awe of nature and the things that were created. Even their buildings, as they were creating their buildings and their technology and all these things, were treated with uh, the respect that God could enter them at any time. And it was taught that many, at many times God entered into some things in nature or some technology and sent messages to the people. Now, you have a certain understanding of this. There are times when things happen where it would appear that God is uh, speaking through someone or something. And this is the same as what they believed. Only their belief was that they would welcome it and actually pray for those kinds of things to happen, that God would speak to them through technology or through a stone or through a the side of a mountain or whatever it was that they were praying for. And some of them would, uh, would worship the uh, nature, as it were, as God being part of it, which was not to be, not at all sacrilegious because God did see them as his people and respected that they did respect the ecology and the, and the beauty that he created. Yes, and I understand that um, with that, those principles and that teaching that they thrived for a long time. What I don't understand is that what happened, what I understand or what I've come across is that there were some energies that reincarnated in, or that incarnated into physical form and worked their way up into a power structure that caused what eventually became the demise. Can well, yes, that was part of it. Um, what That was just one of the belief systems. That was actually, that was part of the belief system that I was involved in. So that's the one that I chose to share with you. But there was other belief systems, of course. Uh, and some of them were, uh, toward the end, rather negative. As people gained great power, they wanted to maintain it. They wanted to uh, keep it. And so some of the priests and priestesses became negative because they turned away from the thought process of the government and the churches to maintain their own interests. And that is what you're, you're talking about. Those that maintain, wanted to maintain their own interests and did conjure and used the dark magic that they found in other parts of your uh, world, which exists, uh, magic existed very uh, predominantly at that time. And so there was a lot of it being used and they actually were fascinated by it and used some of those thought processes to uh, gain power. Now, as for helping with the destruction, actually they did in some way because they were fighting against the positivity that was there, but they were a smaller faction. 
but a very strong smaller faction and they they did have some influence and they did have a say because they were part of the government at least uh, a few of them thank you very much did that answer your question yes it did thank you kindly you're um, welcome <clears throat> there's a question in the oh go ahead is there a follow-up in the room or yeah, so follow up question. Okay, please, go, come here. please head. So, in regards to the um, level of uh, power and and money and uh, status back then, is that reflecting now and how it wants to maintain that now as well? So, is is that the parallel that you see? Not exactly. They did not use a monetary system the same way as you do. Your monetary system is all powerful in the sense that you must have money to survive. Monetary system was more barter, trade, skill, and and um, talent, and and other things that would come into that. So that isn't the where their downfall was. Their downfall, uh, unlike yours, where you put all your uh power into money theirs was they put their power into certain people you do that as well but you have more interest in the money than the people so they put their interest into certain people and certain people became uh almost like a, a deity to them and this was something that was not appropriate and it was something that actually some of these darker entities that were around took advantage of that as well. So that was helpful in bringing Atlantis down. It wasn't their monetary system, which is more of what your society is we're dealing with. Also, your decide society is dealing with rumors of war and rumors of between the all the countries or many different countries and they did not have that because they were at actually with peace with the rest of the world they were fighting within themselves it was it was unrest within their own people because they were so strong they were the most uh, powerful society on the planet and so they they knew that and it went to uh, their heads in some ways but there were still those that were good people and still those that were uh, in in the process of doing the right thing the 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 priests and priestesses and those that were following um the guidance of the spirits and the stars uh, were still doing what they felt was right but they were their hands were forced toward the end to leave even though they were not ones that were wanting to leave. They wanted to try to maintain uh, Atlantis, but you see the greater uh, powers that be uh, in charge of that, and they were overridden, overridden in their decisions. And the, they, even, though some of the, even though some of the governments did come to those that were priests and priestesses, they were still overridden by the power and the influence uh that some had okay thank you very much um marlene has a question yes go ahead unmute your mic hun um Greetings. My question is in regards to the crystal deposits. Major crystal deposits are uh, underground in the Americas, and uh, they have been. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. You were saying, and they have been reactivated fully. Yes. Um, to be used in the new era of the Earth, uh, which is. Yes, the Lemurians did put some in the in the uh, several different areas actually so uh the hot springs area the uh sedona area there was 
there was uh, reasons for them to put them there because there was a lot of <laughs> vortexes and energy fields that would help them maintain their energy over the centuries. And they knew that they would be reactivated. And the, there are other fields in other places, but the very largest of the crystals, ones, there are three that are very, very powerful, are in the Pacific Rim. There are fields of Lumerian crystals that they spread out in different places, though. You are correct. Uh, one of the key places are the Max crystals in Arkansas. Yes. Um, yes. Um, are they being, because they're reactivated, are they being used now and if, by the aliens? And how? Yes. Oh, uh, they are not being, they're actually being used by the aliens and by the humans. Let me explain that. The aliens are you using them to power up the stargates that are there, that are all over the world, opening these, uh, opening up the uh, energy of the Lumerian crystals and the portals that are nearby, that are, uh, they're, they're making them stronger. And this is powering up some of the stargates. I also humans, uh, once they're in these kinds of energy fields or close by these energy fields, are are influenced by them in great ways. They uh, feel greater energy. They have greater thought processes. The pineal glands are cleared. Um, it depends on how they use the energy. They can intend for all kinds of positive clearing in the body and positive use. Thank you. As a follow-up question, in the Caribbean, there are remnants, important remnants of, um, of Atlantis uh, that are surfacing. Interesting. That are surfacing now. Will they be surfacing uh, to the point where we will be able to see the vestiges that are, were left behind? Okay, I understand that some people escaped from Atlantis before uh, it was destroyed. They saw the, the fortune tellers and some of those that were highly psychic saw that there was demise coming and they read it in the stars and in many other uh, ways, and they did escape to different places. And it is very possible places that they have escaped to and took some of the technology, and it may be starting to surface there because they only, for these uh, 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 technology planet-wide, they were in a big hurry to get back home. Now, yes. there are other places where there could be a technology and Atlantean artifacts as well. Sure, what they are called on your planet at this time. Thank you. Um, under the waters in the Caribbean, in the, uh, the Caribbean, but basically on the Atlantic side, there have been, there are remnants of powerful or power stations in the shapes of pyramids that were left yes. behind uh, voluntarily to be used uh, um, to hinder humanity's uh, evolution and ascension. Can you elaborate on this, please? That was not from Atlantis. That was from a different. Uh, that was from a different species. Any uh, the Atlanteans were not interested in hindering future generations. The Atlanteans were not interested in the demise of the planet in any way. They were only They were actually fairly self-absorbed toward the end, and they were not really interested in destroying the planet. They were interesting interested in getting off of it and removing their. Uh, their um, evidence that they were ever there because um, at the time when Atlantis exists, there was still a, the earth was still molding a little bit uh, more than it is now. 
and there was a lot of earthquakes and volcanoes at that time as well. So they they just found it to be well, of, of an environment at times. And that would these volcanoes and earthquakes would cause tsunamis and great disturbances and they just were they could handle some of it and they did put protection around Atlantis but it became uh, too ob obnoxious the planet itself to be too um, uncontrolled so they went somewhere different and they went back some of them went back home but the pyramids that you talk about are that are there for the destruction or the taking back of the ascension or the for the um the energy drawing away energy from the ascension are from a different species and i do not know species that is but i know it was not atlantean based thank you will we ever be able to go back to pangea the pangea configuration of our planet or something similar to it it is very yes actually it is uh, there is a is a what is it called it is there is a prophecy uh, about but it is not for this era right now but for a couple hundred years from now uh, it would appear to be that long that there will be something of this nature yeah. reoccurring on your planet if your people choose to move in certain directions remember you have free will and there are more than one direction that your people can go in but they are seemingly the ascension people are seemingly looking for that kind of an experience and they're looking for an enlightenment period and they are looking for others to join them with this and many of them have a great desire for this and i believe that it is very possible that this could happen thank you very much for your information i very well appreciate it you are very welcome um <clears throat> there's a question from within the chat that sort of dovetails with what you were talking about someone's asking about uh the rose-colored ancient skull does it have any uh, pertinence in, in Atlantis. And then there's two other questions, but go ahead if you have any response to them. The, the crystal skulls are the controllers of the stargates. Are you aware of this? At least that's no. one of the things that they do. Yes. The, the rose colored uh, skull could very well be the center controller skull, but I am not quite sure. I saw some of the of skulls when I was alive in Atlantis, but they they were made for future use. The use at that time, you see, the stargates at that time were controlled from outside your planet and from Atlantean and Egyptian era. Uh, also, there was the Mayans that could that were there that had control of some of these stargates as well at different places in Central America. But remember, they had full control then. They, When the skulls were made, they were for future control because this day and age, they, will, they hold the information of the ancient information so that when they are discovered and put together properly, they will give you what you need to run the stargates again properly wisely the those that were involved with making the skulls knew that some of the information because they would not be consistently coming to earth to check on the stargates but that they, in a future time they would be necessary to be reactivated okay that, uh, just that question brought up a thought in my my mind um, I thought that I had understood at one point that some of these crystal skulls were other dimensional and that they're not really accessible. Is that, were, were many of them left interdimensional? There are, there are the ones that are not dimensional. 
there are interdimensional uh, crystal skulls, or right. or they're not actually crystal, but they're interdimensional skulls. Right. They're made of something other than crystal. But the ones that are on your planet, the ones that are in third dimension, those are the ones that I'm speaking of. Now, okay. there are other skulls, yes, and others made for different times in the future beyond that of what I speak. Okay. And then um, the other question that I came to mind as you were talking was in your now retrospective uh, position to look back on Lemuria and, well, you didn't look, but Atlantis, do you really, do you consider Atlantis to be a society that we really should have, we should aspire to or that we should learn from and avoid? The earlier parts of Atlantis were beautiful, harmonious, and uh very much to be aspired to that kind of community. Yes. Okay. For the last 120 or 30 years of Atlantis that were, that made me grieve. Uh, and I was there during that period and I was there more than once, but I remember the earlier parts of Atlantis, the earlier days, if you will, and then I remember the late latter days as well, and they were very different. And as people evolve, or they let too many people have too much power, or I should should say not too many, but they let a, several people have too much power, and this was their demise. Is it? Are we paralleling that in in our society now? We are. You are, I should say you are, not we are, but you are as a species paralleling some of that, yes. There are those that have too much power or they just disregard rules and regulations that are set in place to cause harmony, to be uh, there to keep things practical and safe, and they're just disregarding things and moving into unsafe areas of thought. Okay, um, then, and this is one more question. Do you have knowledge of the Egyptian uh, race? Um, yes, there's a question I, from our chat that says, uh, would you, um, if Ammon's horn of the hypocamus inside the human brain named after Amun-Ra, the Egyptian ancient god, was that, was that also called the Amun-Ra? It, by some, yes. Okay, so it, it, it transcended the, it stayed. Yes, there's, remember, there's parts of humanity that can be activated be, um, more than what is activated now. You are only activated 10 to 11% of your brain. So what is the rest of it for? Why was it put there in third dimension if you're not going to use it? Right. There are those that are coming or that want to come that will try to reactivate the human brain in other functionalities that are much greater than what you could possibly imagine. This is the job of the pineal gland is to keep uh, the psychic portion of the body safe and open it up only when necessary or uh, when needed. Okay. <clears throat> Christine has a question for you. Greetings and blessings. Um, I was wondering um, when Greetings. you said parallel. <laughs> I was wondering when you said parallel, then um, in one, these are my two questions. Um, Instead of the spirituality, or instead of uh, going for a higher uh, um, attunement, long ago, instead we took the path, um, this path as um, monetary. So, yes. in a sense, do you think maybe in a reincarnational way we're, we're testing out two different uh, methods of of experience? It could be that. I, I cannot say for certain because I do not know God's mind. 
and I do not know exactly all the things about your society. <laughs> However, I see that it is something that does parallel in some ways the Atlantean thought process. My second thing is um, when we talk about third dense, uh, third dimension and um, fourth dimension, um, could this actually be um, where some of the spiritually minded people had left the planet? Um, could that be, in a sense, what we're doing by going to the fourth dimension? You mean those that are trying to move to Terra Ha by just turning into light? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> talking I don't about know what I'm talking about. <laughs> are transforming into light as we speak now from the third dimension to the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension turning into light? Is that what it is? You are moving, if See, you I, are in the third dimension and you turn into light in the third dimension, you're moving to the next set of realities. The next, uh, Terra Ha is the fourth dimension. There are few that can do that because it takes a great deal of prayer, a great deal of uh, bringing the body into a certain kind of density to be able to do that. And only at this point, uh, Tibetan monks have been able, been able to do that on your planet, or those that spend great deals of time alone in meditation and prayer and able to levitate and move into uh, less densities can do that. Now, there are those with the thought process at, on your planet at this time that if they concentrate, meditate, and do these things, they will be able to enter Terra Ha, which is the next dimension, uh, now. But it will take a great deal of uh, separation because the body is what keeps you third dimensional. You see, your spirit, your mind, your body, your soul, the soul is not really third dimensional. The spirit is not really third dimensional, but the body keeps you here in third dimension because you were born into third dimension. Therefore, those that spend time trying to change the density of the body, those are the ones that are trying to move from third dimension to fourth dimension without dying. Now, when you pass or your, when your body is exhausted and gives way, it moves to the oversoul, not to the fourth dimension, but you, as a, a person in the oversoul, may return to a fourth dimensional existence if you wish. Different what we speak about moving from the third dimension to the fourth dimension without perishing. And what is the ascension? Ascension is the next step in your evolution. The ascension is the, the beginnings of telepathy, the use of psychic energy, and uh, starting to understand that when you come together as people, uh, you will be able to know what kind of mood each of you are in without speaking, able to say hello without even uh, thinking, and be able to communicate in some small way without speaking your actual mind. And this is the next step of your evolution. You are starting to feel, many feel great empathy, which is being able to feel emotion one to another. And that is the beginning of telepathy. That is the beginning of your psychic uh, transfer of energy the energy exchange that is beyond the physical. So um, actually the third dimension has many um, different, um, different processes or different steps before we go off into the Correct. fourth dimension. You yes, you will move. You are ready to ascend into the fourth dimension. After telepathy happens, that will create a greater calm on your planet because you'll be able to know 
without without trying to guess how someone else feels and is uh, not exactly what they're thinking, but what kind of frame of mind they're in and what how they are, what kind of frame is, it will calm the world down because you will be in a room and they will not be able to be in a terrible frame of mind. Otherwise, they will be assaulting people that place because it would be a, a personal assault to be able to be get near them, those people that are in terrible mood, uh, terrible frames of mind. So they must calm that. And so they may be in a, a not a good frame, but it won't be that like it is now where some people are violent or it, there still will be violence, but it will be a lot less because people will understand one another in a greater sense and it will cause more harmony. So we can practice this um, walking. So we could practice a lot of this in our everyday lives by whenever we run across people who are very upset in thought, um, love and kindness, acceptance, and so on and so forth. Of course. Exactly. This is actually energy healing. Remember, the person on your planet is able to heal with their hands, some have greater powers than others, one has the ability to send energy out from themselves that is positive or negative during this, depending on their intent, they can send out uh -huh. energies to other people. And many do without even knowing. There are those people you may know that you come into the room with them and you're immediately calm. They calm you down. Their personality is calming. Their demeanor is kind and refreshing. And you change because of them. You change because their energy reaches to you. Do not become affected by your negative energy. And why is that? Because they are sending energy out, not sucking energy in. Okay. If they were to bring be bringing energy in, they would gain your thought process and negativity or whatever it is that you're as. And you see, but when you reach a point of enlightenment, when you reach a point where your body is, your, you are happy with who you are, you are happy with the life that you are living, it goes out to be an example to the world and to calm the world. Thank you. Does that make sense to you people? It does to me. Thank you. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you so much. Good. Okay, there's one question. Oh, go ahead, go ahead for the question in the room. Come to this chair. Okay, you were talking, er, hi, I'm Barbara. Hello. You were talking earlier about the crystal skulls. Yes. I have three crystal skulls. Two of them sit next to Synergy, one of the main skulls from yes. the last years. And I have another crystal skull that sat next to three of the other crystal skulls. Yes. For a time. Now, can I work with these two? Pieces? Yes. All, you have smaller crystal yeah, skulls, not the main no. 13. Many call them 12, but they're the 13th is the center skull. But uh, you have smaller crystal skulls, and they do have power. The, the reason they are made in the shape of the skull is because they can hold a brain-like energy. So therefore, you are inputting the energy of the brain into the skull so that they will accept that thought process and be able to not necessarily think but be able to help you access thoughts does that make sense yes. so you what you are doing is you are charging these stones and bringing them into a place where you can use them to help you 
to access thoughts, emotions, perhaps even chemicals and energies in your body so that they will help you to uh, live your life in a better way. They are the receptacles of that kind of energy and can send that out if you intend to use them in that way. So they pretty much picked up the other skulls' energies? Correct. Okay, and that, another question that I have is, back to Atlantis, is I was told that I was one of the priestess, the healing, working with the golden fire and the temple. Yes. You were before the ending. You were in the middle phases of Atlantis, and it was very peaceful then. There was the beginnings of the unrest at that time, but they were not concerning, and they were not anything that the people were even aware of to some extent. So you were one of the priestesses during the mid, the mid section. Uh, now that mid section was very large, hundreds and hundreds of years. So it was a beautiful time to be in existence. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, there is one last question uh, concerning the foramen in the brain, the the holes that are in the brain. And the, the question is the holes, the holes that, that are there. Is there is that related also to Ra? Uh, let me tell you that the brain was formulated for many different reasons, and the intention was to be able to capture energies whenever necessary. And so, yes, if that's the energy that you want to capture in some of these places, then yes. They can be, these places can capture different kinds of energy if that's what you intend. Now, remember, as they capture a certain kind of energy, they affect the brain in different ways. This kind of energy will affect the brain uh, and move it in its thought processes toward positivity and toward, to intellectuality and to... Uh, Maybe some will be more toward emotional IQ, being able to sense and feel what others are doing and feeling and be able to uh, be helpful to uh, control uh, emotions that are out of control and things of this nature. Or it could be a negative in, in some ways, but you decide what you fill your brain with and how it is to be used in some senses. So keep that in mind. Bring in the thought processes that you want to be available to you. This comes with reading as well. If you are reading books about certain subjects and you are uh, attuned to those subjects and are saying, yes, that sounds right to me, these spaces in the brain can be filled up with those kinds of thought processes and be effective in your life as you live your existence. Some people fill them up with the thought process that they create their own reality, which is a wonderful thing because in many ways you do. So you, cre you are creating a greater place to live in and therefore you do not want to have uh, these negative things in your life. So you put them outside of your cre creation. They still exist in third dimension or in the creation that you are in, but they are not affecting you as much as they used to. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have any other quite Let me see. Well, I, I wanted to say something else before I go. The great wisdoms that were sent out from Atlantis many, many hundreds of years ago still exist today in, in many writings and many forms. You do not really know if they are from Atlantis or if they are from the culture of Atlantis. They do not read as such. They re read as perhaps Sumerian culture nature but there are evidences in there that they have come from higher education from higher realms 
And so many think that aliens have put some of these thought processes into these writings, into these stones, or into these different things. But the Atlanteans saw that stone would last for thousands and thousands of years, so they put some of their thought processes in the stone just so that they know that it would last. Now, their wisdom was great, and so that is why they didn't mind putting it in the stone. The thing is about the uh, Atlanteans is they didn't want their technology left behind, but if they but they didn't mind having their wisdom or their teachings left behind in some ways. But much of their teachings and culture were law. But there are those that still come back and uh, uh, point out that there are still buried information, still buried uh, tablets with great information on them. And that is something that you will be discovering as well. The Egyptian culture was a place where a lot of trading was done at, toward the end and with Atlantis, and they do have some information buried in the Egyptian areas and Sumeria and in the Middle East areas. And actually, in some of uh, the underground and beautiful places, in places like Portugal and Italy and Spain, France, uh, the European area. So do not, uh, a lot are not looking for these things at this time in those places, but they do exist. All right. Thank you very much. Um, there's a question about, there. there's a lot of questions about the Amun Ra and what was his connection to Atlantis because he was the Egyptian god of creation, but of course a lot of these gods have different incarnations at different times. That was his name in the Egyptian realm. You have different names from go for God in all of your cultures. Amun Ra was one name, uh, Yahweh, or Source, or God, or Allah, or a Jah, or many other names can be given to God. It is one perception, one name that was uh, heard when he spoke. So therefore, yes, he is in all cultures in some way, but he is not identified as one name, but as many names. And as you learn who God really is, you will see all the many facets that he has, all the many personalities that he helped to all the personalities of everything that exists is part of God. So therefore, you could never know him completely because he is too much to know and too many facets. But yet, the God of creation is one God because there is one energy that always has existed from for all times. Without that ex energy existing, there would be nothing ever. Okay, thank you. There's no more questions in the chat at this moment. Perhaps someone else wants to speak then. Okay. Goodbye for now. Thank you. It was good to speak to you. Thank you for I bringing that per the Atlantean perspective to us. Thank you very much. This we is my perspective it. as I see it. Your perspective. Thank you for bringing it. Thank you. Yes. It was only mine and how I saw it. Namaste to you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, Grendel. 
Hold on. Okay. Yeah. Get that tail in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know all about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know anything about it. I just know you have issues yeah. with your tail. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, my tail is more famous than I am. I am. <laughs> This, yeah, this all right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, hold on. I I just came to say hello. I wanted to uh, just uh, let everyone know that I uh, care about this planet and the things that are happening. And I'm working in Israel. And that is a very key spot right now, as everyone knows. And I knew it was going to happen there. So that's why I've been working there for the last eight months. So any questions that I can maybe answer, I cannot answer classified questions, but I can perhaps uh, give you a little idea of what's going on. Well, why don't I just do that? Okay. Um, as you know, um, there, were, there was great excitement about the announcement that <clears throat> the capital might be moved, but uh, that I don't think is going to happen. Not truly, because no one would recognize it in the world states. So therefore, this is causing a great uproar in many of the UN and different areas. So it's going to be dealt with very interestingly. That's all I can say right now. So the, the, um, I, I have some interesting information, Grendel. I was speaking uh, when I was in California to Ruben Langdon. I'm sure Jim has also spoken with Ruben in the past. And he, yeah. he has some in inside information that we're in the process of a very soft disclosure at the moment with the different things coming out because this is coming from within the government. Um, yeah. I, do you have any more information on that? Disclosure is happening everywhere, but only in small patches. Let me explain. Just recently, there was a sighting in Los Angeles of a, a, a UFO, supposedly, and that hundreds of thousands of people saw it a disclosure of some sort there are other places in the world that are do have same kinds of things happening and people are talking about it but it only lasts for a short time did you notice that there was yeah. no more attention on that anymore right. because people don't want to talk about it they're a little bit afraid to talk about it so um they'll go yeah there was something there i'm not sure what yeah 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 let's change the subject um but those that know what is happening is that that was a disclosure by your government in some way. Yes, yes, that's what he yes. said. Because that was not a UFO. Okay. That was government saying we want people to be aware that there are UFOs. Now, their reasoning is not positive. They want to bring a negative sort of content to that eventually. You'll see what I mean. I cannot disclose all the all the different things. But they are trying to bring negative disclosure of aliens to Earth, whereas we are trying to bring a more positive ex, uh, exposure to aliens uh, and the future of this world. Is there a question? Yeah. Yes. I was wondering if, with how they want to take it and make it negative yes but it involves you and you have free will but also the mess of letting us do our thing on earth yes can you come in and say if and try to portray us negatively and we're the ones you're trying to portray we can come and actually like make a statement for well, ourselves in some form we already have we've said many positive things there are negative aliens helping them with this negative portrayal because they also do not care if it is a positive or a negative disclosure because they are negative and they don't care if they're negative. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, the positive ones are out here discussing how we can bring a greater and more positive disclosure to your world. And that is something that we have been doing for a great deal of time because we're not allowed to come in and just say, hey, we're here. Your governments won't allow it. And we must, we must adhere to your government regulations because that is your free will. Your governments are making the, the those are, that you chose as leaders mm -hmm. are deciding for the entire planet what should be done. Mm -hmm. And since you chose them as your leaders, they are in charge of that decision. And we cannot go in and change it. Mm -hmm. Decide what happens to your planet. We do not. Mm -hmm. We do not want to come and take over your planet. Who wants to do that? It's a more responsibility. It's about you guys are a mess. <laughs> it would take years and years to straighten you guys out. Who wants who wants that mess? I don't want it. Nah, so, uh, and there are a lot of people that are out there going, "Oh yeah, you're right." Oh, I I hear I hear heads nodding everywhere. So um, they're going, "We don't want that mess. We just want to come in and be your friends and be in in the neighbor, you to be in the neighborhood." We can help you make some decisions that might be very positive for a good change, but we're not coming in to run the place. Ah, that's a, no, no, no. We don't want that with that mess. No. So what what is happening is they're trying to set up for something very negative to happen with aliens, so that people will turn against mm -hmm. them and not want uh, first contact. But we are trying to bring positive thought for first contact. Mm -hmm. So then, therefore, that's the way it is. And then I've got one more question connected yeah. to negativity mm -hmm. and specifically reptilians. From what I've come across, it seems like grays too, but reptilians that there's like a deep rooted psyche fear in a lot of people. And I was wondering how to help them clear that out. How well, they can help themselves clear it out more so. They were the very obvious ones that did uh, a lot of the abductions and things of that nature earlier. Uh, you don't hear about too many abductions anymore because they're not allowed to do it. You hear about sightings of people and, in a holographic form and you see see some aliens running around, but you don't hear about too many abductions anymore. They're really not permitted. And if they're caught, it's a, it's a, they have to pay a price. So um, they're still happening. Don't get me wrong. They are still happening, but they are not as, as they used to be. Plus, so you have that negative stigma around the greys and the reptilians, especially the greys. They are the ones that were bold enough to go and just snatch some of the body, the clairs, grays, uh, some of these species. The clairs no longer do that. The zeta grays um, are, there's a portion of the zeta grays that have said that they are turning positive, about, about 30%. But that is yet to be seen. Turning positive from what they were is almost impossible. But they are trying. I don't want to. I don't want to put a negative twist on it, though. If they are actually trying to do so, God bless them, and I hope they succeed. But that is a very tough thing to do because um, changing everything about what you do to a positive nature is oh, a, a whole turnaround. So, anyway, what was I? Yeah, I am. You know, Brindle loses his train of thought. Yeah, yeah, it derailed. Um, so it was helping people who like have this deep rooted fear of. Like, oh yeah, parents, well, like people who haven't met you, for example, but have had experiences with negative. Well, they're like, coming or... out with some more positive movies mm -hmm. that uh, portray uh, aliens in a more positive way. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not enough, really. It's it's really not enough. 
uh, because they're gonna just gonna go to the movies and say, "Oh yeah, some octopus was friendly." Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's not gonna really win many people over. They should have had a, a sort of a different kind of species, I thought. But hey, at least it was a positive message. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, there they're going to be more positive uh, features of aliens come to light. And many of these things we have to channel through to humanity. And me, th you know what? They're still going to be faced with the, uh, the Christian population, the uh, Islam population that said, oh, no, these are demons. Anything created outside of the earth is not not fit for us and we're the only chosen people oh my god wake up and smell whatever but anyway um they need to wake up and know that that's really arrogant they're we're not you're not no one no species should be saying we're the only species that exists in a positive form that's ridiculous mm -hmm. God created lots of species. He likes company. He likes what he's doing. And if they if they are created by God, of course, there's going to be good and bad, and there will be all kinds of things. But but you can't just say they're all bad. Just that's just stupid. Excuse me if I tramp on any Christian toes or <laughs> or any uh, any toes that. That are like going, oh, well, I'm the only one. Uh, I'm the only one that is positive and the only, we're the only ones that are positive in the universe. Want to be funny when that's, we find out you're the only one that's positive in the universe, Grendel. Hey, I am. I'm the only positive one. <laughs> yeah, and I have a tail, so watch out. That's it. Um, so, yeah. Eva has a question for you, if that's okay. Yes, what's that? Wow, that. Hi, Grendel. You're welcome. I'm very happy to see you. Of course, dear. I love you. So, I love you too. <laughs> question This morning, I woke up around seven because there was very loud knocking to my door, but then yeah. there was nobody there. Is it was it in my brain or is it some trickster? What happened? And my second question is, could you tell us more about what's happening with Palestinians? I am really concerned about them. Yes. First of all, the knocking in your brain, it was in your brain. It was to wake you up. There was uh, a negative entity around, and they would have taken advantage of you in your sleep, but they woke you up so that they just left. Okay, thank you. The thing about the Palestinians, um, this is part of history that's not so nice. There, there are people leaving Palestine all the time, and the, the government is a mess, and there, there's nothing really you can do about that. They brought this on themselves, not necessarily the people. But the people that are leaving are going to find something better, but I can understand why you're concerned. Uh, but just pray for them. It's It's got to be this way. Uh, history has to report it this way. And there's reasons for that, which I cannot divulge. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. But send your prayers there. Continue to, to do so. Yes. Okay, thank you. Love yes. You. There's a question in the room. Okay, and then after that, Shira has a question. All right. Um, Brenda, hi, Barbara. Hi, Barbara. Hey, uh, my friend Yvonne and I are doing some healing work on the planet and everything. Yes. And uh, there's times that we felt that you came in to help. Yes. Okay, just want to make sure that you felt you. Well, the thing is, if you if you mention my name, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I can hear it and I can come and help. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'll show up in person and sign autographs. Okay. No, but I will come and help you with energy healing and things of that nature. Okay. Yeah. And there's one more thing. I want yeah. to give you a hug. Oh, hug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was something that uh, 
would you like to roll around in the mud with me later? Yeah, I okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm Hello, sure what's happening good. over there? <laughs> uh, uh, nothing. I was just. <laughs> okay, Sheer has a question for you. I don't know if there's mud wrestling involved or not. Go ahead, Sheer. No, no, no. I was just teasing. I was just teasing. Uh, hey, Grindle. This is Nivy. How are you? Uh, Nivy, hi. Um, I have a question about a group of uh, anonymous developers. Um, they have a group called uh, the they work in the cryptocurrency space. They have ah. a group uh, that um, that has a project called Skycoin and uh, yeah. Skynet, which is uh, supposed yeah. to be a decentralized internet. So I want to know if uh, if they are uh, uh, benevolent and uh, if it has any connection to AI. It does have AI connections, and um, be careful. Uh, Skynet. Do you re realize that that name is borrowed from somewhere? Yes, yes. That's why I. That's why I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah. So be very careful. Skynet was really a bad reference in some places. So why would they choose a negative reference for their corporation or whatever? Think about that. Exactly. That's why that's why I'm concerned because the project seems a very good one. A decentralized internet yeah. that you can go and nobody can follow you. But yes. I I can't tell you yes or no, but I'm just giving you some clues. Uh, thank you. Uh, if you can check something out through your uh, channels, I would love to know some more information. Yep, yep. All right, yep. Very good. Um, hey. Go ahead. If there's something uh, we should speak about uh, soon, uh, well, you know, uh, me and Sheer might uh, talk to you soon. Yeah, we, we probably will talk real soon. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, uh, Leela has a question, please. Leela, hey, Leela. Hi, Grindel. We can uh, we can play in the yellow mud. Do you remember from the? Ah, yeah, my favorite color, mud. I it know. has a really nice clay-like consistency. It's really cool. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, all right. We are going to enjoy all the Hukulo members one day. We are going to jump all in the yellow mud with you. Yeah, I'm not gonna wrestle with them all. Let me tell you, I just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I started to do work with my friend Kanesh in Astro. And ah. I would, uh huh. And I would like to know if we, uh, pr we if we made some some progress. If we achieve something, it's just to Absolutely. test. Absolutely. Listen to me very carefully. Healing energy is working all the time. Ener a healing energy is so efficient. It's so much more efficient than chemical healing. Well, you know you have to take chemicals over and over and over again to heal, right? Like pills five times a day or whatever. Energy is goes directly to the problem, affect any other organ or part of the body that doesn't need it, and it is efficient, and it does healing and does not have any side effects. So use energy healing all the time. Right. I will. Uh, why I am asking this because I am uh, even if I am doing it, I don't feel it, and that's why I do like to, the confirmation. And for yes. that reason, you give me that is great. I would like to if if you can access my son Enki and how he's doing. Yeah. And if he well, has a, where is he? He has a message for us, and how he's what is he thinking about him going into? I mean, Gaia going into different place, Taraha, and what is he thinking, and what is his idea? Does he has a message yeah. for us? Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, there are certain people moving that want to move to Taraha from the third dimension right now. They're trying to do that. And it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. But um, they can do it, but they have, it will take time. It's not going to take like a month. It'll take years. 
to do it because you have to devote yourself to uh, to changing your density. Do you understand that? So it takes a while to put your mindset into a thought where you believe and know that the density of the body is changing. So therefore, yeah, it's rough. <laughs> you have to stay away from distractions from other people sometimes and just concentrate, meditate, and bring the body. When you start levitating, you're getting close. Right. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to know, I was asking you and you forgot the question. Enki, the one, Enki, the one who yeah. created, helped to modify humans. What is, does he has a yes. message for us humans at this point in time? Well, Yes, but I have to let him give his message. I can't give his message for him. And plus the fact that message has to come at a particular time. It is a specific kind of message, and certain people will need to hear it at a certain time, and it will make perfect sense to them right at that moment. It makes completely sense. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. There's a question from Krelik that's actually quite a good question uh, in the yeah. chat. And it says, different people are talking about um, the Illuminati simulating a fake alien invasion. And yeah. the question is, if something like that happened, would aliens or our ET friends interfere? No. Oh, come on. Let me tell you why. <laughs> I, I actually explained it already. We are under... <laughs> Um, government control. We are not to help you succeed because it's up to you to decide to make the right decisions to survive. Now, if your government wants to uh, create a devious plot like that, which is what I actually was referring to earlier, that there is thoughts of having a fake alien invasion. Now, that would put negat a negative twist on all negative on all aliens, but the negative aliens don't care because they will be part of that negative attack. But it's planned by your government. But it's not really fake. In some ways, it, there will be some destruction, and there will be some side to go through with it. And I hope they don't. But, yes, it is true that they are trying to, they're thinking that that would be a good idea to keep things, people fear-based, people in control and manipulated, people doing exactly what they want them to do. You see, when people are afraid, they'll do whatever the leaders say, pretty much. They'll go, oh, all right, we have to go here. Oh, then we have to go there. We have, oh. We don't, we don't want to get hurt or killed, so we have to do this. So, yes, they want that kind of control and management. Oh, we need to give you money? Okay, good. All right, we'll give you some. So that is a thought process. So how will we know? You won't. you got to trust us. We can't intervene with you because that is not governments have you elected them they are in control of what happens to your world and if they choose to do a, a that kind of thing that is their choice we cannot stop them okay so so if we were to think about alien the, the likelihood of a real alien invasion versus a fake alien invasion what is the likelihood it's rare. It would be, they would not attack you now, really, because you have fourth dimensional technology. Your, your space program is very advanced. There's many things. They, they, unless they are from like a really high dimension, no, they wouldn't even think twice about it at this point. You could wipe out some of these uh, armies because they're not that they're not that huge and they're not 
uh, they do have flaws and they do have, uh, we would tell you what they were. We could tell you what a little bit about, we could infiltrate a little information to come and do anything. So basically, if, if there's an alien invasion, we could pretty much assume it's fake. Yeah. All right. Heard it here first. <laughs> Thank you. Heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Grendel, I still expect you to come over for coffee. So what? I said I'm still expecting you to come for coffee, regardless if there's an invasion or not. Coffee. All right. Coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee. Whatever you want, doesn't matter. Ah, yeah. Squeeze me some bug juice. Yeah, that's. Okay. Is there any other questions in the in the chat? Oh, okay. Maz is Maz is a question. Yeah, there's a couple. There's okay, one here ahead. in the room. Go ahead, in the room. This is Raymond. Yeah. Raymond. Long time, buddy. Uh, and thanks for the energy the other day. You are welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. That's all I wanted to mention. Oh, thank you. You're and welcome. Much love. You're welcome. Hi. Much love to you, too. I God, I hate saying that. But it's, it's, uh, uh, but anyway, it's good. Yeah. Oh, here's another question. Um, just something that came to my mind. Maybe I, I didn't hear it come from you, but as far as like, what if we the people ask you guys to intervene to overtake our government to, so that our world can be in a better place? We listen to your government because you elected them. Yeah, okay, we don't I understand that. Yeah, and if your people, if there was enough of them, we might be able to overrule them or override them in some way, but um, it would have to be quite a lot. Uh, and I didn't want to say that I don't like saying much love. It just sounds so fruity. But uh, um, it doesn't sound real sincere. But I sincerely do love you. Yeah. All right. Is that it? All right. Want to come? I, are, are we done? Um, well, there was one question, but if you can just confirm oh, that go ahead, go ahead. Um, okay, Maz is asking, and I think it's the same answer that he's wanting to know why ETs aren't paying any attention to the Middle East. Because we can't interfere. Yeah, that's the same answer. Okay. All but right. um, uh, you have prophecies about many things, and we are not, uh, we cannot override your governments. We cannot do that. Your governments make decisions for your people. That, then that would be breaking a, a big law. The law of the uh, your natural development. You need to be a part of your own development. We can show ourselves to you. That is part of your natural development. Whether you choose to accept us or not is part of who you are. But we can't come in and say, oh, your government sucks. We're going to change it. You're, we don't want this war to happen. So, hey, we're going to stop it. We can't do that. It's not the right thing to do. It's against what they call on Star Trek the prime directive, which is to not be uh, directly involved with government or the people. But we are in some ways anyway. But um, but we're not we're not fighting for you. We're not developing stuff for you. We're not giving you technology. There were some that were, but we aren't. Um, we are trying to obey the rules so that you will survive. Because if people outside your world are giving you too much technology, you're going to kill yourself early. Right. And that's what they want. Right. Right. You're going to wipe yourself out, and we hope you don't do that. We hope we don't do that, too. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so very much, Grendel. It's always a pleasure well, to, to interact with you. <laughs> is there time for anybody else, or is that it? We have about 23 more minutes, so we're happy for the next being to come. All right. Right. All right. So happy... Happy day, everybody. Happy I'll talk day. to you later. Okay. Bye-bye, Grendel. Grendel.
Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Take your time. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ow. Your tail gets stuck in the door. I know uh, yeah. <laughs> Greetings, I am Takur. Greetings, Takur. Namaste. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to say hello and tell you that everything is going as well as possible for the moment. There are a lot of volcanoes and earthquakes and storms and huge weather changes happening, but um, it is what it is and uh, lives are being spared as much as possible. That's all I can report for the moment. Are there any questions? Yes, there's a question from Maz, uh, specifically about channeling. Um, Maz wants to know, Yes. Uh, let me make sure, I, uh, he really wants channeling advice, basically, for the channeling practice, and, and if there's any uh, messages for him. Um, yes. Remember that when you're going to prepare for channeling, you must be relaxed. You must be in a good frame of mind. Be in a very positive thought process. Be in a um, sort of a meditative state. When you're first starting, it is more difficult than after you have been doing it for a while. You will start to either feel things around you. You will start to hear things in your head. You might hear things in the room also. If you hear voices in your head, speak them out if it if they say hello if they say welcome whatever it is speak whatever they say to let them know that you heard them there may be more behind that also remember when you meditate for them to open your channels as much as possible now there has been a directive that come came out that uh, asked for no implants to be given to anyone anymore. That no species should w give implants to anyone. And that was a little disconcerting because some of the implants are very good. I do have a channeling implant that after people learn to channel, they can get it and it fills in and helps them move forward with their channeling abilities. But we were asked not to do that at this point. And we are wanting to find out actually what's going on with that directive. But it came from the Galactic Council. I believe there are some that are thinking that any kind of implant is not good or is de could be possibly detrimental. But right now we're uh, working on getting a different kind of thought process working. But for the moment, we're not allowed to give implants. So I just wanted to let you know all those things. Was that helpful? I hope so. It, there's a qu question. Yeah. So I have a question connected to We can't. What I've come to we can't hear him. What I've come to understand about teaching is that you help others help themselves learn, and that's the best approach. But yes. when it comes to learning on your own, I feel like that's a much more less intuitive thing for me to like be able to embrace Correct. and go forward with. And I was wondering if you could give any advice for people who like whether or not they have a hard time with teaching or an easy time, have a hard time with the learning process on their own. Correct. Teaching others. That is why I was giving some instruction. On you on his own or on your own, learning to channel can be difficult. Other on with some people it can be natural. Some people have natural abilities, like learning a Reiki, for example. There are some people that have very natural abilities and can just heal whenever they want to. 
or and some have natural channeling abilities that they can channel and not feel any difficulty but let me tell you this if someone is having difficulties teaching is the best route letting them know that there is ways everyone is different everyone learns differently and everyone can receive uh, channeling in a different way I am letting him or her know that there may be thoughts coming um, um, they may feel something outside the body they may hear things inside the head they may sense they have a sensory perception that something is nearby or and this is to let you know that you are becoming sensitive to channeling now karen you're a channeler how did you learn to channel well i i have been talking to theos my whole life and there was just a moment where um they offered to channel through me and then i agreed after a couple of years so good point that it's also your readiness mm -hmm. there are some people that are spiritually not ready or they are not ready in their fear processes they have a lot of fear about channeling you must be ready you must have no fear of it you must be accepting of it and you must know that uh you must be protective of yourself of, of course that no negativities come in but many of you have voices or languages galactic languages that you've had all your life this is the beginning of channeling sometimes reiki or energy healing can be the beginning of opening up different areas in the mind so there are many many different things that can uh, contribute to learning to channel but whenever we are teaching someone to channel i usually go in and try to find what is best for that particular person mm -hmm. and as i see what is best for this particular person is they become more relaxed the situation they they want to accept it I think they are pretty accepting of it but they need to know that it is something that they uh, are attuned to that they feel comfortable with and then they will uh, relax into the situation listen to the voices speak what they hear invite whoever is around them to come in at the appropriate time and then if i could have a second if i have a message too go ahead if something's meaningful to you you have the right to pursue it or not but i don't see why you wouldn't want to and if you do and you try and say it may even be the most meaningful thing compared to other things at the moment but you have a harder time with that it's not that you should give up you have the right to or that you should put it off but really it's slowing down and relaxing. When you get frustrated, all that is is a sign that you need to slow down your pace of trying to go forward because you're building yourself up and working yourself up with developing too much pressure that you're putting on yourself. I don't wanna see anyone give up on something because when they went all for it, like pedal to the metal, what was appropriate was easing up on the pedal instead of stepping away from that path because you're likely going to find yourself on the same road in the same situation at a later point in time. Correct. Relax. Do not push yourself too hard. It. I was saying that you must become part of the idea of it. You must accept it fully and be not fearful of it. And do not try too hard because trying is is not what it is about it is about allowing mm -hmm. it's about allowing who is there to come through and speak a message and remember this as well when someone does come through let them speak their message purely <laughs> do not become involved with it do not put your own perception on it do not put your own ideas on it but let them tell their they need to because it is developed for a reason in that way. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you very much for that. Um, there, there's a question. Oh, th there's a quick question that you can answer. Uh, did because the implants have been stopped for t at the time being. Is that also the same for DNA infusions? No, DNA no. infusions are something different. Okay. But oh. implants are implants are technology, and they do not want technology in human brains or bodies. Okay, and if time. someone has a question about a DNA infusion, they should send you an email or through Jim? Yes. Okay. They can still do DNA infusions and give DNA for children or whatever it is they'd like to donate. Okay, yes. perfect. Okay, the other question in the room, and then we have some on our side. Perfect, thank you. Barbara. Hello. I've been working on channeling, so the information you just provided really helps me a lot. Good. But about a week and a half ago, I was something kept something kept waking me up during the night. Is there they were trying to maybe get my attention, or was there something else going on? Was that kind of? It like could be. Let me. I would have to check into that. They could have just warned you that there was something negative uh, around, and that you need to be aware of it to pray or whatever. Or it could be someone needed to speak a message to you at that moment. And if if you woke up. It's possible the message has gone to your subconscious and it is part of you already and will come out when necessary. But I feel like there's more than one being. It's just like so much going it on. It is very possible that they were warning you against something. Yes. Okay. okay thank you. You're welcome. And then, and what was that? The other question was uh, so the people that Here. do have implants, have they been taken out or, or is it just there's no new one? Not. No, there is an argument about that at this time that those that have implants that were given are what you call grandfathered in already and should not be removed. But there is still discussion about removing them. But at this time, no, only negative implants have been removed or what has been deemed as negative implants. They are saying that all implants could have negative effects, but many are there for a positive outcome, such as these channeling implants. So the thing is, it it is the, what it is. Uh, we are still discussing whether the positive ones, as we call them, should be removed. They have not been removed yet. Okay. All right. Um, there's a question, and moving on to a different topic, I think. Uh, first from Christine, and then Leela, and then Ava, I think. Very well. Greetings and blessings. Chris to greetings. Um, <laughs> I have um, two questions. One is, um, you had told me about the arthritis in my hands. Well, now I can't close my hand at all. So um, Interesting. I am so grateful, so grateful that I, I feel would, no pain. I just, typing is hard or holding things. So I was wondering. We will look into that, Christine, because we did take away all the pain. Yes, you did. The pain has moved. So, uh, but the art, it appears that there is still arthritis in those places. Whether it is active and alive, that is another question it out okay um the other question is um i do a lot of reiki on animals because i yes, find it difficult to expose myself to people by doing it on people that's that's an issue with me yeah. but um on the animals do i have to keep being present there or um can i just think um just think the person or think the, the horse or the uh, donkey yes, or you whatever. Have long distance energies, distant, long distance. Have you taken any Reiki courses? Yes, from you. Or any courses? Yes. yes. So and therefore, then, send the symbol to them also. Okay. So just continue. Okay. Yes. It's they will somehow. receive energy. That is your intention. Okay. So, um, all I have to do, really, from what I understand, because the energy is always here, is just simply intention the person or the, or, and the energy goes directly. And direct then send it out. Uh, you can 
intention the person and then send your energy out. It okay. goes out through the forehead, the wrists, the fingertips, the palms, the heart, wherever you feel it going out, just send it to that person. Okay. Or in this, in this, okay. Um, I'm not explaining myself well. Um, what I mean is um, if I've done, whether it's uh, from distance or from being there, once I've started it, can I occasionally resend just by thinking of them? Or do I have to go back through? No, you can resend, yes. Just okay. by thinking about it, just by imagining the energy, you can send it. Okay, thank you very much. And thank You're you welcome. For that. Okay, um, Leela, go for you have a next question. Okay, thank you. Uh, when my son was born, born in November on your ship, could you tell me if I was uh, visiting uh, my son when oh, he was? Yes, you visited uh, four times already. Oh my God. Uh, so could you tell me how he is doing and, uh, and when? Because he, he's, he wants to be the, uh, uh, the commander on the ship. Uh, so yes, I know. I would... <laughs> he, is, he is too young for that, but I know. He is, but he is highly driven, and he is wanting to do many things, actually. But uh -huh. you have visited. Let uh, the parents know uh, that you wanted him to learn so many things and how to bring him up and what foods oh. from earth you would like him to try and you've also been there to hold him you you believe that they don't hold him enough so you instructed them to hold him more so he is <laughs> doing very well uh does he look a little bit like you too because you are mom also yes he looks a little like me but more like you in the face actually aha uh -huh. and who is the father because he got now three moms Three mothers, yes. and who is the father? Kraka. Ah, is he handsome? Yes, he is. Ooh, good. Okay, that's wonderful. That that's everything. Talk talk to you soon. Very good. Thank you. Bye. Eva has her question. Hi, Tucker. Um, first of all, I am very very grateful for your help with um, my daughter's school challenge. After yes. your innovations, like two two days later, the problem simply disappeared. So I'm incredibly grateful for your help. And 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 this time, if it's possible, I've been having um, nasal infection for six weeks, and now I basically would have to take antibiotic, which I don't want to. I wonder if it's possible to receive assistance with that, if it's okay with you. We will do a scan on you while you sleep tonight and send an infusion of the necessary, whatever it is necessary. We do not know that quite yet. Thank you so much. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. And then if that does not work, we will uh, perhaps increase the dosage. Okay, thank you. And I see you in the workshop. Yes, it will be a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Okay. And then the next question is from, the last question is from Sheer. Yes. Hello, Tucker. Greetings, Sheer. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Well, my question is... And how are you? Hmm? How are you? Ah, I'm uh, good at the moment. Thank you. My question is about the implants. It seems I have no idea why they had to put this uh, regulation. It's very obvious that the bad ones will keep putting negative implants, but the good ones will not be able to put any good implants. Um, so my question it is... Go ahead. My question if it's the Galactic Council who made this rule about everyone in this galactic galaxy, galaxy, is there a way that maybe we can get implants from another galaxy? 
Well, first of all, it was not the Galactic Council that first had the idea. Osiris and Isis went to the council and uh, asked that it, that implants be stopped for the moment because they wanted to make sure that only positivity was going to occur on the planet. And even though some of them, uh, some believe that many of these implants are positive, they wanted to uh, do a an analysis of these implants before they were con uh, they were continued and so therefore the council thought that that was a plausible and um acceptable idea and so they have accepted that uh, thought process when you say osiris and uh, isis, isis. isis are they still in the same form as their egyptian god reincarnation no they are they do not look the same no so a different reincarnation of them. They are not reincarnated completely. They do have aspects of themselves on the planet, but um, they are there's part of them still in spirit, which is what who spoke to the Galactic Council. And if I may ask, what is their position that they speak in that matter with the Galactic uh, Council? That the Galactic yes. Council actually listened to them? They, the Council did listen to them because of who they are. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. May I help you? Yes. Um, hi, my name is Lacey, and thank you for being here today. Thank you, Lacey. Um, I it's have good to meet you. a lot of diseases, and I was wondering if you could help me manage them a lot of dizziness diseases diseases ah we could do a scan on you while you sleep and um but i would like to have a personal consultation with you mm -hmm. discover from your perspective what is happening and discover from our perspective what we would like to do i do not like to give to uh to someone that's new like yourself, um, infusions without talking to you about what they are and how they work. Okay. Thank you. Very well. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. We are really at the top of the hour, Takur, so... Excellent. I will take my leave, and it was good to speak to you. It was lovely to I speak to you. I love you all very much. Namaste. 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 Uh, hello. Hi, Dan. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. Hi Thank you. Quite a lot of inf interesting information. We spoke with the La an Atlantean, gave a lot of information. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Oh, so did everybody things. have a good session? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Good. Yes. Glad to hear that. <clears throat> Well, it was good to be here today. Good to see all of you. Oh, there's quite a few of there. It's a full there house now. today. Full house in the room and full house on the chat. So. Oh, very good. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Yes. I will uh, talk to you all later. Have a wonderful lunch. Well, we're going to have a wonderful lunch here. I'm not sure what time it is where everyone's <laughs> at, but okay. maybe dinner for some people. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Ah, breakfast. <laughs> but anyway, have a great day, and I will talk to you later. All right. Thanks so much, Jim. Thank, Thank you, Jim. Much love. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. 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 Bye.